Hey, welcome to the 167, and we're here with Seven Minute Stories with Ben Mays. Say hello, Ben. Hello. Um, you didn't say hello, Ben. Uh, so Ben's going to be telling his seven minute story, and at Seven Minute Stories, you get to talk about seven minutes, whatever you want. You can talk about your whole life story. You can talk about what God's doing in your life. What are we going to talk a little bit about today? Um, I'm going to go through pretty much a vague overview of my story and uh, what's happened most recently and how I've gotten reengaged. Awesome. All right, we're putting seven minutes on the clock. Go for it. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to talk about this because I think it's a testimony that a lot of people uh, probably have, which I did not realize for a long time, um, and that is, you know, growing up in a Christian home and feeling like you don't have a story, and that makes it, you know, hard to put yourself out there and to um, communicate your story that you do have and uh, put value on the things that God has done in your life. Uh, so my story kind of is I, I grew up in a Christian home. I've been going to new life since I was six or seven years old. Um, realized my need for a savior in kids ministry, very young, like six or seven years old. Um, I think I could say I gave my life to Christ at eight years old, uh, here at the church and kids ministry with Kevin, uh, who helped out then. Um, a few years later, in fourth or fifth grade, I got baptized here also. Um, and then after that, my life changed a lot because we had just adopted my sisters. And um, at the same time, we also switched over to a private Christian school um, for middle school and into my freshman year of high school. Um, so that really set the foundation for like my Christian and biblical knowledge. And That's a lot um, of people's story, that you grow up in the church. It was my story. I grew up in the church, and I thought my testimony doesn't mean anything, because I would go to these conferences and see people that were testimony. It's like, I did drugs, and I killed somebody, and I'd be like, mm -hmm. my testimony is I went to church. But God can use this anyway, right? Yeah. So in, uh, in that private Christian school, I went there through my freshman year, and in the first few years, uh, I really started to get a lot of biblical knowledge and stuff, and... Um, so from the outside to people like at New Life and in the church and just family, friends and stuff, I was like this little model Christian kid uh, who knew his Bible and was good and all that. But um, on the inside, I was not that at all. And um, it really pushed me into more introversion than I was already struggling with. Um, I never dug in with like a close group of followers or anything, and so I never talked about the things that I did struggle with, and I dealt with a lot of self-condemnation and self-judgment and uh, developed crippling anxiety and depression issues that would swing in huge cycles, um, extreme highs and lows. Um, that I struggled with all throughout middle school and like things that I would start struggling with with lust and pornography, like probably most people my age do and have and will. Uh, not having people around me to help me through that or talking to anyone about it, I just kept heaping more self-condemnation on myself and I didn't have a grasp of what forgiveness really was. Um, so I just put on a mask and went through life with that. That's um, a really hard thing to to not have a community of people and to go through and think that you're the only one and think that you have to yeah. hide that from everybody. Yeah, and that's exactly what it was. Um, and then as I got a little more uh, into the group of people in the church and uh, in the youth group and everything, which I attended religiously, but I don't know that I'd say I was terribly involved. Um, I went on all the trips and everything, and that's where I had some breakthrough moments, but nothing that really seemed to stick because I wasn't putting the effort in outside of that time. Um, but it was then that I started learning more about like discipleship and what we should be doing as Christians and how we should be bringing people to Christ. And that's when I really started to struggle with feeling like I didn't have a testimony and um, I'm already, I'm still struggling with these private sins and I didn't want to let that out and... It just, <clears throat> I felt like I couldn't make a friend, much less a believer. And so it was more like I felt like I wasn't fulfilling the calling. So it was even further pushing me into this hopelessness and self-destructive condemnation and uh, feeling like I was just 
outside of everything I should be doing. Um, and when I would finally get like back on track with reading or with prayer and it turned into more of a chore and um, I did understand forgiveness that I was forgiven of all these things that I was struggling with, but that may not have even been a great thing at the time because it more just pushed me to get comfortable and that's never a good place to be. Um, so I went through life for most of high school like that, just kind of lukewarm, still struggling, not making any friends, not digging any deeper into anything. I would still read my Bible and stuff, but it was just as a chore. Um, and I've, I'm benefiting now from that because of the knowledge that I gained, but at the time I wasn't benefiting because I wasn't digging. Um, I wasn't pursuing a relationship at all, and I was just doing it to do it. Luckily now that knowledge is helping me as I actually do pursue a relationship with Jesus, but at the time I just put him in a box. It was just a part of my day. Um, just that chore. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and in into high school is when I met Allie, who I'm now married to as of last November. Um, and I think without her knowledge, she started to really push me to get back into the groove because I had started to look at myself more and what I was doing and realizing that the further I took this relationship, the more I would need to be an example. And um, so that pushed me a little ways, but it wasn't till we got engaged that I really started to look at things. We kind of came to a crossroads with how we were going to pursue God because um, I guess just because I had someone to discuss it with finally. Um, and my parents had switched churches, so that was hard. I was going to their church most of the time, and um, she had a lot more friends at New Life, so she wanted to go to New Life. And so we finally just had to step back and make a decision, um, and we decided to stay here and dig in more. And uh, she got us into the life group with Mike, um, into somewhere where we were actually pushed. And uh, in that affirming group and where I was actually you know, taught and uh, got to know people enough that I could be more open and we, I, we were close enough that we all talked about our struggles and that kind of stuff started to come out and the weight was lifted on that. And uh, we learned about our position in Christ and um, pretty much that the condemnation that I was living in is exactly what he died to erase. And uh, since then I've largely overcome anxiety and condemnation. And when I do have those struggles again, they don't have me. Um, it's something I can put down again. That's awesome. And what do you mean, like, for um, for the listeners out there, you said our position in Christ. What is that like? What's the difference between being, like, where you were in that condemnation or where, you, where are you now? So I was at the place where I knew that, like, I knew that sin was forgiven and that I knew it wasn't going to keep me from going to heaven. I knew that it wasn't condemning me to hell, but I did not think of it at all as being just erased, which is the truth of past, present, and future. I would feel like every time I did, I needed to repent and ask forgiveness right then, and if not, it was just going to um, get worse. And uh, now I realize our position in Christ is that it, He is in us, and our sin is erased completely. It is cast, as he says, as far as the east is from the west. And knowing that, you can rebound a lot quicker when you do fail. And it's not that I don't struggle with anything anymore. It's that I know what to do when I do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's our father and he loves us. And that's, it's always funny because it's, it's almost scarier to live in grace than it is to live in condemnation. Mm -hmm. But it's like once you accept that and you actually understand it, it's so freeing. Well, thanks so much for sharing your seven-minute story, and I think that's going to be powerful to a lot of people because a lot of people grow up in the church and they feel like they got to put on that mask and they're they're still wanting something more. So, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, awesome.